Okay, so you got your four uh, colors out. And what we're going to do is you want to take a, a large flat brush. This is a three-quarter inch, a half inch, uh, whatever you're going to use. And you also want to have your little tissue paper at the ready. And you're going to water down um, Moody Blue first. And you want to make it a wash, but a heavy wash. So water down some Moody Blue. And let me get back off a little bit. Okay. Ready? We're going to take that Moody Blue wash and we're going to paint it on. You want it to be wet, but just across the bottom and up the, the right side a little bit. And then what you want to do is you want to take your tissue paper and just kind of pounce it. If you get too dry, you're going to get a little line. Lines are okay, really, because, like I said, stuff is on top of it. But you can just pounce and kind of blend that color a little bit. You also want to put Moody Blue up in the top a little bit. And the trick is to kind of make sure the paint is staying wet. So it, if you need to, you can pick up a little water on your tissue paper and that helps a lot. So we've got blue in the bottom, across the bottom, and blue across the top right side mostly. And this is going to be one of those things where you work a little fast. You want to fold your tissue paper, refold it so you get a clean spot. And then we're going to thin down some honey brown. And the honey brown I'm going to keep mainly in this center area because it's behind the cactus. So then just get that slip slap some honey brown on here. Get it down into the blue. And again with your tissue paper. I'm going to pick up a little water. I, apparently I picked up a lot of water. And don't worry about this too much. Because like I said, the, the uh, cactus are going to go on top of it. Now that piece of tissue paper is done for me. So I'm going to get another one ready. And this time I'm going to do golden straw and I'm going to go across the whole I think I do gold. No, I do coral blush. So thin down some coral blush. Make it real juicy. And that goes all the way across. And it's not, it's really not going to look that great until you get your cactus on top of it. Although this doesn't look too bad, if I say so myself. And then of course this last little area is going to get golden straw.
So I gotta refold my tissue paper for a clean spot. So if you have a, a dryer or a heat gun, you want to dry your surface. So you're going to need burnt umber and your crackle stamp whichever one you used. So you want to get out some burnt umber. I'm getting washing my brush out. And I stamp a little bit different because I like to make a mess of my palette paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out some burnt umber on my palette and I'm going to just spread it out and kind of into a rectangle like this. So I've got a rectangle of burnt umber down here and then I just put my stamp in it and press it down. So then I've loaded my, my you can see the crackle in my paint there. So then I'm just going to go back to my piece and just randomly add areas of this crackle. You don't want to fill up the whole background. And you can just go back into your rectangle puddle of paint and pick up some more. So I just go around. I don't put too much in the center area. A little bit, but not too much. So you've added some crackle to your background now. And then you can wash your stamp off. I do it later. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to put your pattern on. Just pattern number one. So you're just going to put the first layer of the pattern on. I like to use this uh, erasable gel pen because I can see this one's green so then I can see where I've already put the pattern on and that way if I get interrupted I know exactly where I left off. It also comes in handy if you're prepping more than one surface. And when I'm done, I can hit it with a, my heat gun and it, the ink erases, so then I can use it again. So right now you're just putting the basic pattern on so we can base coat.
we are going to start base coating once you have your pattern on. So you're going to need avocado, Hauser light green, Hauser medium green, and aloe. If you didn't have aloe, you could use jade green. All right, I'm going to show you something here. And you're going to go, oh! But when you base coat these, one coat will do. Don't add water to your base coat. It doesn't have to be opaque. Okay, it doesn't have to be solid. Because we put a lot of stuff on top of them. There's lots of dry brushing and and shading and lining and highlighting so they don't have to be completely solid even if you see some of your crackle stamp underneath it's okay all right so don't spend a bunch of time trying to get this perfect base coat that is thick and solid and takes forever to dry okay promise me you're going you're not going to do that I used to do that all the time and then I learned over the years that what's on top of it? If there's a lot of stuff on top of it, I'm not going to base it in that much. So with your pattern out, because it has numbers on it, you're going to base coat cactus number one with avocado. And cactus number one is this tall guy. So just give him a coat. of avocado. Cactus number two, which is the prickly pear cactus that's in the background, is done with Hauser light green. Cactus number three, which is this one right here in the front of the one, the two we just painted, is painted with Hauser medium green.
And you can probably guess what the last cactus is. It's painted with aloe or you, whatever your substitution is. Once you get everything base coated and dried, you can put the detail pattern on. Um, I wouldn't put on these little divots and V's and stuff, but just the separations for the arms. Um, on this one, I would put the lines, but not the little snowflake looking things. Getting, even just getting these based on, you can see how your background complements them already and kind of makes me, reminds me of a, a desert sky at sunset. We are going to start working on, of course, cactus number one, which is this guy. So you're going to need some golden straw out and you're also going to need Hauser dark green. We're also going to use the aloe that's on your palette. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to dry brush highlighting on this cactus. And I like, I'm like i going to show you how I like to dry brush. And But if you have a way that you like to dry brush and it works great for you, just do it that way. But if you have trouble dry brushing, you may want to try it the way I like to do it. So we're going to dry brush highlighting with aloe through the center of this cactus and each of its arms. So when I dry brush, I like to use a Lang Nickel Short Round Sable Brush. There are comparable brushes in, that are made by Dynasty and other companies too, but this is the one that I choose to use. And when I when you initially get it, it's kind of has a long. Uh, top uh, and it's a little pointy and then after I dry brush with it for a while it kind of starts wearing down and this is the area that I like it to be this is for me this is the perfect spot for dry brushing it will wear down all the way like this there is some bristles still there and that's still good for cheeks so don't throw it away when it looks like this but what I like to do is we're going to dry brush with aloe. So my brush is dry, no water. That's why it's called a dry brush. And I'm going to pick up some paint on that brush. And I'm going to scrub it around on my palette. And I like to go in circles, one way and then the other way. And what I'm doing is I'm working that paint into those bristles a little bit. So scrub it around like that. And then what I like to do, and you can see the evidence of that here. I am sorry about the camera. I wipe it off on my towel that I have underneath. Just to wipe the excess off. And then what I'll do is I'll, I go to this part of my hand. And I start rubbing it around in a circle on my hand. It's not going to hurt you. It's non-toxic. But when you initially hit it, it's cool feeling. But what, after you scrub it around a little while, it loses its coolness. It doesn't get hot or warm or anything. It's just not cool anymore. And that's a good indicator that I've taken enough paint out of that brush 
that I can go to my piece and dry brush. So I'm going to start and just go down the center. Now it's pretty wide. Thins down when I get between those arms. And I get as much down in this little skinny area as I can. Then I'm going to go to the arms and dry brush on them. You should have to scrub to get that paint out of the brush. And there are some times when I'm dry brushing and I'll say don't wash your brush out because I'm going to pick up a lighter color and dry brush brighter highlighting. But on this one, you can go ahead and wash your brush out. That's the only dry brush highlight we're going to do on this cactus. And another reason I like these brushes is because I can wash them out and then I can go to my towel and scrub them and dry them so that I can use it again right away or, or you know, relatively quickly. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take Hauser Dark Green and a liner brush and we are going to line these thin, thick lines that go down the cactus and down the arms. And I want you to pay attention to the shape of the cactus. You want to follow the shape of those arms. So with liner consistency, Hauser Dark Green we're going to add those lines. I always like to start in the middle and so the middle one's going to be relatively straight except that I'm going thin and thick and squiggly. So we're not looking for perfect straight lines here. And then the next one's going to start, it doesn't start over here, it starts back at the same point as that center one did. So we're not just lining stripes, we're going to take them from the same center point at the top. And if you can get another one in there, that's good. get to the arms, I'm going to start at the top center of the arm again, but I'm going to follow that shape so it curves just like the arm curves. And they start all from the same place also. So we need to let those lines dry before we do floating. So what we're going to do is we're going to move over to cactus number two, which is the prickly pear cactus, and we are going to dry brush highlighting on each of its sections with golden straw. So that includes even those little 
buds that are on the ends of the arms. Except the one that's behind the cactus. You really can't get into that one. And then you can wash that brush out. We're going to go back to cactus number one. And we're going to float some shading on him with Hauser Dark Green. And what I want to do is I want to float on the bottom edge of each of those arms. So I'm going to start at the top, kind of where I started all my lines. And I'm just going to float the bottom edge of each arm with the float of Hauser Dark Green. I'm going to turn my guy over so I can do the other arm. You're also going to float from the top of the main body of the cactus down the sides of it and that includes where it's um, behind this um, Hauser medium green cactus, cactus number three. So that I like to start at the top and kind of float down the side. Not kind of float, I actually do float. And I'll stop when I get to that arm, and then I'll continue down below that arm. And the same thing on the other side. going to float next to the cactus that is in front of it. You also want to float in the bottom of each arm, at the base of those arms. And then just one more place is you're going to float around those arms where they come out of the main body of the cactus. So lots of floating on here, lots of shading. Now here you can see already why one coat, one base coat was enough because we've, we've covered up so much of it that you can't see the background anymore. Now you need your liner brush and aloe and we're going to, I know the lettering is covering it, but you can see it here on this arm. We're going to line some highlighting in the space that's between those dark lines with aloe and that's going to go about uh, halfway down maybe on each arm about halfway down on the main cactus but then a, you want to line a couple highlights down in the lower part of the cactus also and that's just with your liner brush and aloe you don't need to make liner consistency paint 
just regular strength paint. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start from the top again and line some aloe about halfway down in between each of those dark lines that we did. And it doesn't have to fill up the whole space. You just want to put another line in there. Try not to stop them all in the same place. Kind of vary the end, end part, the end stop. Don't forget to add just a couple, two or three, in the lower section of the cactus. And now that you've gotten really good at that, we're going to go back with golden straw and line a brighter highlight on those lines we just did, but it's only going to go about a quarter of the way down. So your liner brush and golden straw, we're just going to line a brighter highlight. That doesn't go as far down as the first highlight we did. kind of keep it towards the top of the cactus. So we're going to work on those little flower, that the little flower that's at the top right on this cactus. So you're going to need petal pink or whatever substitution. You know, a, any any light little pink will do. And warm white, deep burgundy, warm sunset, all these colors for just the, that one little bloom. But seriously, the blooms on cactuses are just so vibrant and colorful. We're going to also need bleach sand. If you don't have warm sunset, you could use persimmon. You could even get away with a uh, burnt orange you already have golden straw on your palette. So petal pink or whatever you're substituting, warm white, deep burgundy, warm sunset or persimmon or burnt orange, and bleach sand. So this is just like a little hat sitting on top of this cactus. And what we're going to do is take a round brush and some petal pink or whatever pink you're using, and I'm just going to Add some little flower petals at the top of this cactus, but make the bloom sit off to the right side. Like four or five petals, six petals, whatever. I'm not picky. These petals kind of look like a blob right now, but we're going to start separating them from each other by taking our liner brush with some warm white, and we're just going to line a little highlight in the tip of each petal. It 
And if your petals are still wet, that's okay. Because the, the uh, white will just blend in and make a lighter pink. So just line some warm white in the tip of each petal. We're going to add some shading with deep burgundy and you can do that with your liner brush or you can do it with a little float. I tend to like to do it with my flat brush as a float. And basically it's not a real float, it's just you're setting down the color side of your brush at the base of each petal. So you're just touching a little bit of deep burgundy at what you think would, would be the base of each petal. So it's kind of just stick the corner of your brush in there and leave some paint. I'm going to take my liner brush and some golden straw and I'm just going to tap a little bit of golden straw at where I think the center would be. I have one petal that's kind of flipped up in the front so I'm avoiding that but I'm looking at the center of the flower and just tapping in golden straw and then I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that warm sunset or the, whatever orange you decided and I'm going to tap a little bit of that in with those golden straw dots. We have one more thing to do to this cactus. Two if you feel like it. If you want to highlight the tips of your petals some more you can line just a little bit more warm white in them. I'm not going to. I'm going to leave them the way they are. But what I am going to do is float a little bit of deep burgundy. Very well blended out and let me show you Oh, let's go here. When I ask for a very well blended out float, what I'm looking for is I'm going to corner load just like I normally would for a side load float, and I'm going to blend it on my palette. And norm normally when you blend for a float, you blend in the same line. But when I want to soften that float a little bit, I start walking away from that line. So I'm leaving more color on the palette than I am in my brush. And so that gives me a softer color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this very well blended out float of deep burgundy and I'm just going to add just a tint of deep burgundy under that flower and on the top of that cactus. It's just a very soft tint just to tie that flower into that cactus a little bit more. We are going to line these little spines on the cactus and they're going on the dark lines that you put on. Don't do a whole lot. We just want to give the idea that there are prickly spines on these. And that's with your liner brush and thinned warm white. Just kind of here and there flick a little spine on those dark lines. So you don't have to make them a career. Make them go different ways. Don't make them all come out of the same side. Don't forget to put them on the arms.
awesome. We're going to move on to our prickly pear cactus. And you're going to need a couple new colors. Turquoise blue and coral blush isn't new. We had it out earlier, but if you've changed palettes or it's dried out, you want to get out a little coral blush. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to dry brush a little bit of color onto our cactus with coral blush. And so this is just like in little spots on the main arms and the body of the cactus. So it's going to be more in the highlighted area. Just a little touch of coral blush dry brushed in there. So I'm going to dry brush a little bit here and over here and then a bit more on this side just to add a tint of color. We're going to float shading on this cactus much like we did the uh, previous cactus with Hauser Dark Green. So you're going to go in the bottom of each arm. It's only two, so that makes it easy. So it's going to be the bottom of this arm and it's going to be the right side of the other arm because I'm considering that the bottom. I'm going to go down the left side, which mainly is just this little piece right here tucked under that arm and then next to the cactus that's in front of it. So if you have a mop brush and you want to mop out some of your floats to soften them, that's a good place to do it. You also want to float on the arm on the left where it's covered up by the previous cactus. You want to go around on the body of the cactus around the left arm. and then in the base of each arm, at the base of each arm you want to float. Hauser Dark Green. We're going to float on those little dimples and they're just little C strokes of Hauser Dark Green. Um, don't get too carried away because uh, each of those is going to get some uh, prickly spines coming out of it. So just little C strokes of Hauser Dark Green to form those little dimples. So here again with your liner brush and thinned bleach sand, you add the little spines that come out of each dimple and they're just like little V's. Let me get closer here. They're little V's that don't actually meet down at the bottom. But in each one of those little dimples, you add these little spines. We're going to float some very well blended out turquoise blue in a couple of the shadow areas just to add another tint of color. So all I'm going to do is come here 
and add just a little bit of turquoise blue. I might add some down here in this little corner. And I'm definitely going to add some on the main body in that shadow area. So I just want to add a little tint of turquoise blue. We're going to work on the little buds or the fruit next. And apparently I originally painted those with uh, coral blush, but I'm not going to have you repaint them. We can just float some coral blush on them. So on the ones that are on the right arm, I'm just going to float coral blush on the left side. And I'll do the left side of the other one too. And then what I want to do is I want to come back with a little float of deep burgundy just a tiny one and it's going to go right on top of that coral blush but it's not going to cover as much of an area so you'll still see the coral blush under there so just a little float I want you to go back and side load some coral blush because I want to add a couple of little floats to the main part of the cactus and that's just in a couple places I want to float this top edge of the uh, right arm and then I'm also going to go on the right side of the main body of the cactus just with a nice float of coral blush if you can crack open your Hauser medium green which was the color we painted cactus number three it's kind of the medium value green of the four greens that we use to base coat with and you're just going to touch a float of Hauser medium green across the bottom and up the right side of each of those fruits so across the bottom and then on the right side Each one of those fruits has a flower uh, bud on it. There are only three petals each, so they are golden straw. And on this one that's kind of hidden, it only gets two petals. So you just want to paint some little golden straw petals coming out of each one of those pieces of fruit on this cactus. They don't have to be perfect. I'm not going for perfection. We're going for a suggestion of a flower coming out of that fruit. And just like you did with the pink flowers, you're going to take your liner brush and just line a highlight on the tip of each of those petals with warm white. You're going to touch a little bit of shading at the base of each petal with warm sunset. So just at the base of each petal, touch a little warm sunset. We're going to work on cactus number three. We're going to dry brush highlighting on him with golden straw and this is going to stay up around the top and just down the center. 
a little bit. You're going to need evergreen. And what we're going to do is we're going to float evergreen in what I call the ditches. And what it happens is you're going to float evergreen on one side of each of those lines that, of the pattern that you have on. And then you're going to come back and float evergreen down the other side. So you end up with the back-to-back -back floats of evergreen. And that's going to form the ditches. I don't know if that's a technical cactus term or not, but that's what I used. So what I like to do is start on one side and do the float down one side of each of those lines. Evergreen's a transparent color, so make sure you have lots of it on your brush. But just go through and float on one side of each of those lines. I don't think you have to worry too much about these these three at the top because they're going to get covered up with a flower. get down a little. So we've done back to back floats on each of those lines. Oops, a little too much paint, but it'll be okay. We're going to float a highlight in the top of each of these sections with golden straw. So they're kind of it's kind of like a little C stroke float of golden straw in each of those sections. And that just helps them look a little rounder also. So now what we want to do is we want to take our liner brush and thinned evergreen and down the center of each of those sections, you're just going to do a very thin, kind of nervous, haphazard, it doesn't have to be a complete line of evergreen down each of those sections. You want to keep them thin. Don't worry about the ones behind because they're going to get covered up. And this cactus has little spines on those lines that you just drew. And they're done with a liner brush and thin warm white. And they're like, kind of like little snowflakes. You know, the little X's with the plus sign through them. Don't do too many. The hair on my brush. Okay, just a little, maybe five up each spine.
the flowers on this guy are they're even they're easier you're going to load your round brush with warm sunset and then tip it into deep burgundy and kind of tap it on your palette to blend a little bit and you're going to stroke on some petals that are in the background with that double load and then you can wipe out your brush pick up warm sunset again and then tip double load it into golden straw So I'm going to push you a little faster now. The rest of the cactuses are, aren't quite as involved as these three were. So we'll be able to move a little bit faster. We're going to work on cactus number four. That was painted in aloe. And you're going to just dry brush highlighting on it with bleach sand. And you're just basically going to go all over that cactus with bleach sand. We're going to float a highlight on each of those little fans with bleach sand. So each of those little scalloped edges gets a highlight float of bleach sand. You'll be good at floating scallops on when we're done with this guy. So if you have your dryer handy, you want to dry that. And now you're going to float evergreen up that center line. So you're going to end up with a back-to-back -back float on that center straight line. And then you're going to float evergreen next to each of those scallops that you just highlighted. So a float of evergreen up the center. and then next to each of those scallops that you highlighted. We're going to line those edges of those scallops with thin bleach sand just to make them more prominent. So don't make it a career, just add a line to the edges. Doesn't have to be a complete line. 
can be hit or miss. We're just looking to define them a little bit more. Not the center line, just the scallops. The little spikes that are on this one come from each of the tips of the scallops. They're just little V's of thinned soft black. And these are the last of the spiky things that we have to um, paint. So wherever there's a point, you just want to pull a couple little spikes out. The spikes are what make this cactus interesting. So once you get those spikes on, you can get out your layer two pattern and put the pattern on for there are just three little cactuses and some rocks On these cactus here on the left side, you can just put the center stem line and maybe the top petal. You don't need to put on all those petals. You're going to need Hauser Medium Green and Golden Straw if yours is dried out. Hauser dark green and turquoise blue. So we are going to paint the leaves, line the stems, and paint the little petals on this succulent with Hauser medium green. So I would line, and I'm going to use a round brush. I'm just going to line the stems and then with my round brush I'm just going to kind of set down the petals one coat is going to do it we have a lot of stuff on top of here And then you're also going to paint those two long leaves with Hauser Medium Green.
One coat will do. We're going to move over to the next cactus and that's going to be based in with evergreen and I want you to do it with your round brush. You want to start with this petal that's the very top one on the tip of your round brush. Bring it down and then flatten it out to paint that leaf. And you just go around and do that with all of the brushes. So you start on the tip and then you flatten your brush out to make the leaf. flatten it out. Some of them are going to take a, two strokes. So some of them you'll get lucky and they'll paint in with one. But some are going to take two. And just ignore where the rocks are going to be. You can go right through those. There's a lot of stuff that goes on top of these, so don't worry if you can still see the cactus that's behind us. It'll be okay. So we're going to go back to the cactus on the left, and we're going to float a highlight on just those two leaves with golden straw. So just across the top edge of those two leaves there's a float of golden straw. You're going to float shading on the bottom of those leaves with Hauser dark green. On each of these little flower petals or these these little petals on the stems you're going to float a little sea stroke of turquoise blue in the top of each one. So just a float of turquoise blue in the top of each of those little petals. And then you're just just like we did on those flower petals at the top where we just um, touch the corner of our brush to add some shading we're going to do the same at the base of each of those petals with just a touch of Hauser dark green so just touch your brush at the base just to add some dark Hauser dark green at the base of each of those little petals. We're going to move on to this aloe looking plant over here and you're going to float just a touch of golden straw in the tip of each leaf. So just in the top tip of each leaf just add a touch of golden straw. 
this is how you can define where your leaves are, um, especially through the center. If you kind of lost them there. If you don't have a leaf somewhere and you want one there, you can just float like there's a tip of a leaf there. If you can still get into your soft black, you want to just tuck a little bit of soft black shading. Doesn't have to go like completely around the leaves, but just tuck it in here and there to separate the leaves from each other. It's kind of like just touching it in at the base of each leaf. just like we did with the flower petals. And that's with soft black. There are some little hash mark stripes on each leaf. You don't have to get carried away with them. But they're just little hash marks, just quick little short stripes that you line on with thin golden straw. This is another one of those things that you don't need to make it a career. We're going to go over to the right side and there's this really bright colored succulent over here. We're just going to line that stem with Hauser medium green. And it kind of gets lost a little bit in that cactus. So you're just going to come back with a little bit of golden straw and line a little highlight on it so it stands out a little bit more. Not that it's the star of the plant or anything. You're going to need your number six filbert. A number four will do, but a number six would be good. And we're going to stroke on those petals with coral blush. And so stroke on that center one, the ones on either side of it, and the larger, longer ones first, and then come back and add the smaller, there's only like four smaller ones. But with coral blush and your filbert, you just want to, let me get over here, set down, twist and come to a point so you get a nice little petal. The side ones are easier than that first middle one. So I'm going to add these two side ones. And then I'm going to add a couple larger, longer ones.
and then just some smaller ones that come. Yeah, four or five of them to find a kind of fill in the center. So you want to get your dryer and dry those really quick. At the base of each of those petals, you want to touch a float of golden straw. So kind of like you did those leaves on the aloe, you want to touch some golden straw in the bottom of each of those petals. You can go around on those back petals, just float around the little petals that are in front of it. And then if you can get into your deep burgundy, you're going to float a sea stroke of deep burgundy on the tips of each of those petals. You're going to take your liner brush and just line a little bit of Hauser dark green at the base of each petal to kind of make, make it look like it's, um, oh gosh, I lost the word now, the, um, the base of each petal. I know there's a word for that. So just your liner brush and the Hauser dark green, you just want to line a little bit of that in the base of each petal. Now the petals that are behind, you don't have to worry about them so much unless you can see the base of them. Whoops. that just kind of connects those petals to the stem. We're going to paint those rocks. They're really quick and easy. You paint them with a flat brush and you're going to uh, use bleach sand and soft black. You want to load your brush and kind of mix it a little bit so you get that um, kind of brownie gray looking color. And then you just kind of paint this rock in. You can make your rocks any shape you want, but you like it to be a little streaky. So it kind of has more of a rock look. So bleach sand, pick up a little soft black and mix it slightly. And now if you have a, a part of your rock that you don't, I mean your cactus or succulents that you don't like, you can always paint a rock in front of them. I think I have, I think I made that. It's 
So you can put as many rocks as you'd like. Once you get them based in, then you just want to wipe your brush out and pick up a little bit of bleach sand on one side of your brush and just go back and give your rock some lighter areas like this one I liked I wanted to make it look like it had some um, crevices or stuff in it So you just kind of go around and tap in some lighter areas on your rock. And then you do the same thing with soft black. You just kind of come in and add some shadow areas. Think like a rock, right? Get out our handy dandy stencils and add some lettering to this guy. What's left to do on this piece is the lettering, which is all in the directions. There's a little bit of shading that, that is done around the cactuses on the background just to pop them off the background a little bit more. There's some shading around the outside edge, and then there's that thin little stripe that goes around the border. But we'll go ahead and put our lettering on. And you can paint it on or stencil it on. If you stencil it on, line it up and then tape your stencil down so it doesn't move. while you're stenciling. But your lettering gets stenciled or painted on with bleach sand. Stencil makes it so fast. And I'm going to show you something that I like to do when I stencil lettering on. You always have those little breaks, those bridges, so that the centers of your letters don't fall out when you're cutting a stencil. And so what I like to do is I like to come back with um, the base color and I'm going to paint in those little bridges. Actually, I'm painting in the whole letter right there. But wherever you have a little bridge, which would be usually O's, um, E's, here on this V, you have a little one. You want to come in with bleach sand and fill in 
those bridges. So it looks like you hand lettered the um, lettering and didn't stencil it on. Your G has quite a few little places. And the R. It, it just gives it more of the look like you spent the time to hand letter as opposed to stenciling. Not that stenciling's bad, but it just looks more finished when you do this. So something I always do to my lettering, and you can see this lettering kind of blends into the background a little bit. So what I like to do is I like to line a shadow on the background or whatever's behind my lettering um, to the top and left side of each letter with thin, soft, uh, yeah, thin, soft black. So I'm just going to thin down some soft black, a, a nice thin wash, and with my liner brush we have. I'm just going to go to the left side of each letter with this soft black and line a shadow and what this does is it helps to pop that lettering off the background a little bit and especially in this case it makes it so you can actually see the lettering. So wherever there's a top or a left side, you just do this little line of thin soft black. And look, you can see that, you can see the word love so much better than you can the rest of the lettering. And that's all in your directions. On the sh shading on the background that we do a little bit, that's also done with soft black. So you're going to do very well blended out soft black on the background and you're just going to go around here and there, tuck some color in just to pop your cactus off the background especially in like this area oh, that you can't even see that I'm painting in just to pop it off the background just a little bit I'm going to come in here so wherever you feel like you want to tuck a little bit of this soft black shading to You see, it makes a difference here. It makes your design stand out more. All that hard work you spent on those cactus. And you also do this float of soft black around the outside edge. And that kind of ages the plaque a little bit. There's a little bit of color floated in the top of each letter, and that's turquoise blue, very well blended out. And you just come in just like you did with your flowers when you were just touching color in. You just want to touch a little bit of turquoise blue in the top half of each letter. And with the the corner of your brush it's easy to stay off the background but that just adds a little bit more interest to the lettering and helps it to come off the background a little bit and then the last thing 
it's just that border stripe and it's just a thin stripe liner brush and thin soft black you just want to come and add this little border stripe that goes around and then you'll have a completed piece I'm sorry we didn't get all the way done in the allotted time basically you just have lettering and some background shading and that border stripe to do and that stencil makes the lettering really easy well thank you so much for joining me I appreciate it thanks to Cupboard Distributing for allowing me to be a part of this program don't forget to share your finished project